Now, this image is a somewhat obscure illustration of the individual's experience of the passage of time and the progression of experiences throughout his or her own lifetime. Imagine that you're in the back seat of a car facing out the rear view mirror and the car is in motion. What you're seeing is essentially your life in this image. The road is your life. It starts at the present, which is one of the four borders of this image, and it goes back to the vanishing point, which is indicated as your birth. <clears throat> the other elements in this image are experiences of your life, the things that you have experienced. For example, A is a building that I can see stretching into the present, the present being the right-hand border of this image. It's a large building, or at least from the point of view of the spectator, from my point of view. I am the person in the back seat of the car looking backwards uh, from a forward-moving vehicle. A would be, for example, my spouse. I did not know my spouse at the time of birth. So there's a large part of this image that does not contain my spouse, my wife. But at some point in the recent future, at least compared to the rest of my life, I met my wife. Now that would be the left-hand corner of the building. You notice we can only see a tiny image of the right hand, although I suppose to make this image accurate, we wouldn't see the right-hand corner of this building at all. But A would be my spouse. She occupies a very large part of my perception, but she has only come into the picture of my life fairly recently. B would be someone I have known most of my life, if not all of my life, but they don't really have, they weren't that important to me, at least in terms of overall importance in my life, um, compared to my spouse. Say, that might be my best friend or just a friend that I've known my entire life. You note that B, the sidewalk, stretches all the way back to the vanishing point, or at least as far back as I remember. Someone I know that's not quite as important in the scheme of things as my spouse, but I've known for a long time and still know up to the present. Hence, B forms something of a, to use an artistic term, an infinity line that goes off the margin of this image into the present. C would be somebody that I met just slightly before my spouse and then ended my contact with, or um, this person left my life uh, at some point where in the recent past. So C is a building. If C is a building that represents um, someone that I knew for a finite period of time that was relatively important to me in the fairly recent past, say in the last decade or so. D is someone who has occupied a similar place in my life, but prior to that, someone I met before my spouse, but I also only knew in the recent relatively recent past. So, since it's a large image, I still have strong memories of this person, but um, I no longer am in contact with them. They're no longer part of my life. E, in my case, would be my mother. I knew her all my life, uh, up until she died at um, the age of 23, my age of 23. She was very important in my life, um, but is no longer there. I had to sort of make E as sort of an artificial construct in this because I couldn't find an image with a building like that. Um, so she was important, extremely important in my life. And, but she did come to a, an end, my experience of her in my life. Although I can still see E in the form of memories, but I'm no longer having new experiences of her in the same way as I'm no longer having new experiences of C or D. So, we are looking back towards the vanishing point, and our experiences sort of fly by on the four borders of this image. That is 
the normal perception of time and experience. Now, this relates to one aspect of karma, which is experience. Whatever we do remains on our radar, as it were. It remains in this image. Whatever we ever experience, anything we ever experience, remains on this image. At least so long as we have any memory of it, subconscious or otherwise. <clears throat> the only point at which things vanish is when that individual memory reaches the vanishing point. In other words, if I remain in this car long enough, eventually D will go off the map, or E will go off the map. I will lose memories, even, of that person. Now, that would have to be an awfully long road to have someone forget their own mother, but it is at least theoretically possible. D forgetting D, I suppose, would make more sense, um, but uh, in any case, I think the, uh, the image is sort of coming into, clear, into, into a clear picture now. The point of this in relation to karma is that we all have this kind of an image. We all have this canvas which represents our view of everything that we are. These are all of our experiences, and we all have a slate like this. We all have an image like this. Karma is everything that would appear on our own image. Bordered on the four sides by the present, with a perhaps infinite number of buildings in there, and little tiny details. One could include, say, the telephone pole or the telephone wires telephone wires to the right hand, uh, upper right hand part of this image would be a small thing that we have known all of our lives and continue to know. It's not very important in our lives. It might be, for example, um, some small object that one has always had, a little keepsake, something important. Um, all the wires or most of the wires in this photo go off the screen. In, into the present. In other words, we've got a lot of small things that we've had for as long as we can remember. So we would all have a near infinite number of little bits of experience in this image, and they would fly by f starting in the four margins, the four borders, and head towards the vanishing point, which is essentially the vanishing point of our experiences, i.e. the point at which we forget things or we lose all influence, or they lose all influence over us. This is one view of karma, or one aspect of a certain view of karma. Our experiences are that which make us what we are. And this is an attempt to illustrate the individual's experiences from the individual's point of view. We have these experiences, and it's difficult not to have these experiences. We all have memories. We all have things that happen to us. We all have the marks that they've left on us. We all have things that we have done, and they have left their marks on us. This is one view of one aspect of karma. If we were to take some sort of eraser and erase this, erase all of this, and yet still exist in the back seat of that car, looking backwards on as the car moves forward, and we erased the entire image, we would have someone who has erased all of his or her memories of any experiences of anything. It would essentially be what a newborn sees as his or her experiential path. In many ways, karma is experience. It is our experience of everything and the effect that that has on us. And important experiences tend to dominate our view. Unimportant 
experiences are small, but they can be unimportant experiences that have lasted a long time, as in the wires, or they can be unimportant experiences that lasted a short time, say if we had a shorter wire, or they could be very important experiences that have lasted a relatively short period of time, such as my marriage, A. But put together, each of us has a canvas on which our life is, as it were, inscribed by the passage of time, by our movement in that car, as it were, backwards, although it's almost as though we are sitting still in this image, and the world, or the street, in this case, a street in Fukushima, Japan, is whizzing past us on all four margins, all four borders.